Here's a list of things you will need. You will need a flathead screwdriver, a pair of cutting pliers, a regular little sharpie, and a heavy object. I mean, I chose this, but you can use a hammer, whatever you want. You will be using it to, to hit something else later. And we will be supplying the following. This object right here, the red, uh, it's called the red tool. A new AC adapter. A new receiver kit. And your new motor. Here is a miniature head rail that I created for this, uh, this experiment. Um, if you notice, I'm always gonna be working it from this side with the motor to the right and the end cap, the empty end cap to the left of me. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is, like I said, the motor's gonna be to my right with the empty end cap to the left. And the first thing you wanna do is remove the end cap on the motor side. So you know, it just kinda of just pops off. Okay, so you first wanna start off with all the veins traversed uh, I guess in the closed position so that they're all spread out throughout the, uh, throughout the whole entire head rail and using the buttons on the receiver right here as you can see right there you want to press the button that will tra traverse them in the open direction and you, you're going to want to hold it down for about five seconds you know, it doesn't really matter how much time, you know, five seconds, you know, six seconds, it doesn't really matter. It's just, but just as long as it's not, you know, like one or two, it has to be like for a solid five seconds to open it up. Then the next thing you want to do is on, at this point, you want to get your Sharpie, and this will be the only time you use the Sharpie in this whole entire, you know, through this whole process. You want to mark any random uh, little bead on here, on, on the top. Because what's going to happen is that when we go to, um, we're eventually going to have to take off this, this, this chain. And the one thing we do not want is for the, you know, at the end when we go to put it back on is for this chain to get flipped. So by marking, you know, the, uh, one of the chains on the top, we know that when we come to come back in the end to put it back on, that this also has to be on the top and then we're set. So it's mainly just to, to, to I guess, you know, for the orientation of the cord. Now at this point, you're gonna grab your uh, your flathead screwdriver and you're gonna insert it into right here. Don't worry about getting electrocuted or anything. Like there's no open circuitry out here, so there, so there's no risk of that. But using the the, the flathead screwdriver, you want to kind of insert it right here and then kind of just rotate it so that it pops this wheel out of these two little uh, you know connector pieces. Kind of just pop them out. And then at this point, you, um, this chain, you want to take it off of the wheel. Now, it'll be pretty tight, but don't worry about breaking it. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty, hard, uh, pretty hard stuff, so it, won't, it won't, you know, won't break in half. So just kind of just force it off, and there. Now at this point, we have to go back to, now to the other end, the end opposite of the, of the motor, and take off this end cap. And to do that, all you do is that you, you essentially rotate it away from you, to hear a little snap and then it kind of slides off. No. That's it. Just like that. Now using your, your finger, you, you you go over here and you pretty much essentially just push in this head rail in maybe about, I don't know, two, three inches. That's pretty good right there. Now here, this is just a shirt on the other end. I'm gonna go ahead and push it again. And you notice that as I push the, the end cap in, this part is gonna come out. So, um, and, make sure, and just make sure to grab the two, you know, the two pieces that, like the two little gears that end up falling off. Just put them off to the side for now. Now at this point, you're gonna grab your, your cutting pliers, and you're gonna cut off this little black, uh, this, this little black washer right here. Just cut it out. Cut it and just take it off. Now, once you cut off, once you successfully cut off this, this little washer, now the motor can be, 
can be slipped off. As you can see right here. You zoom out a little bit. And just kind of just you know unplug it over here, the, the power as well as the receiver. And just kind of just and using your index your index finger, you just kind of just push it out. And the motor should just at this point just slip right off. Get the cord out, of course. At this point, it comes right off. Now you grab your second motor, the one that the new one that we supplied. And the first thing you do, of course, is take off the end cap again. Okay, so now with your once you get your new motor, the first thing you want to do is first get the cord that's coming out of the, the head rail and you're going to want to insert it into this part right here. There's a little a little a little opening like here like if you see it from the side, a little opening right here. That's where the cord's going to come out of. So, let's do that real quick. So, like I said, you're going to insert it like so. It's right through there. You know, and kind of just pull it up, put it along. Like so, and then this rod right here has to go exactly into the, the hole inside of the head rail. So just kind of just put it in. Like so, and just bring in the head rail, or the I'm sorry, the the motor onto the head rail until it fully comes into place, like so. Now at this point you go back to the end on the head rail opposite of the head of the motor and using your finger you pull this back up to the edge and you get the end cap that you took off and you put it back on. So you kind of put it in and then you rotate it now back toward you, which I guess is now clockwise. And you snap it in place. You should hear, you should hear like a little, like a little click. Now at this point, what you're, what you're going to need is the next part is a new one of these washers, identical to the one that you broke off, which will be supplied in this receiver kit as well. I included maybe about four or five of them, but you only need one. You will also need the red tool that we spoke of, along with the heavy blunt object that. Or I chose just to be this, like again, you can use a hammer, it doesn't really matter. And now what you want to do is that you want to get the, the washer, and if you notice the washer, one side is concave, and one side is convex, so, or a smooth side whereas, versus a rigid side. And so what you want to do is that you want to get the rigid side on top of the red tool right here, like on, on this part right here, so it falls right on top like a cap, like this, just like that. And then you want to, and then on the actual head rail itself, over here where the little metal rod is, right here, you want to insert it, kind of like put it on top like that, put it right into it like this. And then with your blunt object, you're going to want to tap it in place. Like so. Go all the way in, all the way in, all the way in. Now this, this piece will be, uh, will be preset to the exact depth that you need. So what you have to do is just keep on tapping it until it... But once you finish banging it in place, then when you... You notice that when you try... When you know, when, when I... Like with my finger, like pushing the motor from the back, when I push it, it doesn't... The motor doesn't stick out anymore. Like it's officially in place. Now at this point, what we want to do is get one of the gears, or specifically the one with the little crescent right here, and you can either use the one from the previous motor or you can use the one that we're supplying in this little receiver kit right here. It doesn't quite matter. And what you want to do is that also on the actual head rail itself, if you notice the pinion inside of here, right here, also has a matching crescent. So what you want to do is that with this gear, you want to match them, you know, pretty much mount it on top of it so that the two, so that the two crescents kind of no, so they go in like so. And once that happens, then now what you have to do is that you have to rotate this gear clockwise. You can either use your finger, or you can use, you know, the if you want to, you can use the the flathead screwdriver, whatever you know, however you want to do it. I'll, I'll just use my finger, 
and you want to rot rotate it clockwise until it can't go anymore. And, um, and once you get to that point, now, now you want to go backwards just a little bit to get that crescent now facing toward you. Like so. And now what you want to do is now, now you want to get the other gear that doesn't have the crescent. And, and again, you can, you, you can either use the one that came with the previous motor or the new one in, in the same little bag. And you want to mount it right here on this last little one right here. Like so, and put it in. And at this point, now we are one step away, which is the last step is just now finally mounting this cord back on top of this main gear right here. So again, what we have to do, like the same as last time, using the flathead screwdriver, you will want to, you know, go into here a little bit, into this little opening, and kind of tilt it so that the, the gear pops out a little bit. Like that. Now, if the gear comes out, it's okay. Just mount it back on. It's not that big of a deal. Like so. And now at this point, what you want to do is pretty much pull out the cord as much as it can. Now, it'll be pretty tight to get it back on top of here, but that's the way it's made. Um, and if you notice, since, you know, from before when we put the Sharpie on here, now we know that this, this Sharpie is the, is the one that goes up on top. And now you pretty much just have to force the cord back over the wheel. like so and now at this point you, with your thumb and then an index finger there's these two little tabs outside of right here you want to kind of like just lift them up and with your other index, index finger just kind of insert this into there like so like that now at this point we're pretty much done but just to be on the safe side let's test it out while it's still on the floor you know so we don't mount it up and then come to find out that something went wrong and so what you want to do is that you want to get the, the AC adapter and always make sure that you plug the adapter into the motor first and then plug in the adapter into the wall. If you do it the other way around when you plug it into the wall first and then the motor, it might cause a short circuit. So always do it this way first. So this goes to a little plug outlet over here, plug this into the wall and then plug in this receiver into the motor. Um, to do that, if you notice, the receiver head right here has this little part like sticking out and it goes straight into the motor. Here, let me show you. Let me grab the old motor. If you notice here, this little groove right here in the bottom lines up with this groove right here in the bottom. Like so. Kind of just goes in like that. Just push it in. So we'll do that over here. Now all that's left is just to go ahead and do it for a spin. Make sure it closes, rotates. Now, so at this point you just want to test every single button, make sure everything works. And once it does, all that's left to do is now get the end cap and just pop it right back on. And that's it. Now as a final note, it's important to note that on the receiver that's plugged into the head rail, there are, there's a dial right here with, you know, with like a, like a little arrow with numbers all around it. That number corresponds to the frequency that goes with your remote. So you have to make sure that this number, whether it's the zero, the one, the two, it doesn't really matter what number it's on, but what it is important is that this number matches the number that's on the remote as well as here. So if this is on zero, this has to be on zero. This is on one, this has to be on one and so forth. And if you want to, you can always you know, change this number here by using the little, this little piece that's in the kit, which is this little, like a little, uh, I don't know, like a little plastic screwdriver or whatever you want to call it. And it goes into this slot like this, like so, and you can move it around. You, can, you, know, you twist it, whatever. But just make sure that this number matches the number here. Otherwise, the receiver won't respond to the remote.